الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Um, we're starting back, inshallah, our halaqa, Friday halaqa. I mean, we stopped for a little bit of time, and now we're uh, back. Uh, and uh, one of the, the things that I really want to start with, because of the month itself that we are in right now, is the, uh, the story of Musa alayhi salam, kalimullah. And it's a beautiful story, and it's a lengthy story, and it's an important story. So all three things make it um, significant. Okay, I mean, subhanAllah, when, from some of the things that they say, that, that the Prophet Musa alayhi salam in the Qur'an was mentioned almost more than 120 times. More than 120 times he was mentioned alayhi salam in the, uh, in the Qur'an. And that, 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 if it tells you anything, it just tells you how important he is uh, for us to know about him. And uh, what it also does tell you is that it, it tells you there are some sort of lessons that should be I'm just going to turn off my, phones, my phone here because then things just get funny sometimes. <laughs> and what it also does tell you is that it tells you there are certain lessons that have to be learned from his story for us as Muslims. And SubhanAllah, uh, you look at the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, when he says, you will follow the footsteps of the people of Ahl al-Kitab until they, you know, even if they go into what? A hole of a lizard, you will follow through them. So, one of the companions actually asked the Prophet, he said, Yahud and Nasara, Qala wa man, you know, who else? Who else would be the one? So, we should really take heed in these kinds of um, uh, stories and what happened to them. Also, you'll find in the stories of Musa alayhi salam um, some really important lessons to do with how hard and how difficult his life was um, really com you know I guess really I guess um, as, as a righteous man as a, as, a, as, a, as a beautiful I guess really a prophet of Allah Azza wa he faced a lot of hardship so this is also this there are a lot of lessons in this and I really do want to go um, through his story with you one bit, bit at a time so here's the problem though okay and let, let me maybe uh, I'll, I'll, I'll speak about the problem and then I'll, I'll speak about the solution afterwards the problem is his story is scattered everywhere Certain events happened, and we just don't know, I guess, um, when it happened, you know, in his life, I guess, and which part before or after this and so on. But what we do know for a fact, and that's the only way that I can actually split, I can, I'm going to split the actual situation into, into two different or his story into two different sections because that's really important for me to, to for you to know how I'm going to go about telling his story. There was the one part about about Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun. This is a story in itself that's been mentioned so many times. And then the bulk of the story itself is Musa alayhi salam and his story with whom? With his people themselves, right? They, they, he had a lot of issues with his people. And there are also stories with him outside of his people. Yeah, I mean, there are two important stories, for instance, that are, happen outside of his people. One of them was with Al-Khidr, right? And the second story is the story of his death. That's a very beautiful story that you also want to. So I guess really what we can do is we can probably break it up into um, three sections. We'll speak the first section that we'll do here is we'll, we'll actually uh, talk about Musa alayhi salam himself and um, his story with Fir'aun. And then maybe the next halaqa or so on, we'll talk about Musa with his people. And then the third halaqa, I guess what we'll do is we'll uh, conclude it with telling stories that are just, that we don't really know where they fell, but we know they're, they're really important for us to also know because they're just, um, they're, they're good stories as well for us to know. طيب. So, who is Musa? <coughs> so Musa alayhi salam, is a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was sent in the Bani Israel. Now let me tell you a story, let me, so we can begin this in the appropriate way for you to understand who Musa is. So, you know that Yusuf alayhi salam, the son of Yaqub alayhi salam, was the one who was sold out or he was uh, I guess really uh, pushed by his brothers and uh, taken by the uh, Sayyara into Egypt and he was sold to the Aziz of Egypt and in Egypt basically 
um, when his brothers knew about him, he went and he, uh, this is after the lengthy story, right, that, that you, everybody knows about Yusuf alayhi salam. He went and he told him to go and bring my father and everybody from your, or my family into Egypt. Yaqub alayhi salam is the father of whom? Is the father of Yusuf. طيب. And he's also the father of, and Yusuf, by the way, had how many brothers? He had 11. All of them, there were 12. Very good job. He had 12 of them. And from those 12 people, that's like basically the, 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 the 12 children, right? There came the tribes of Banu Israel. Yaqub alayhi salam himself used to be called Israel. That's the name of Bani Israel. This is where it came from. So, they came and they lived in Egypt and they were very honorable at first. And uh, because obviously their brother was, you know, uh, almost became the Aziz of, of Egypt. He was the one taking care of all the, like the minister of finance, really, I guess, in a, if you think about it this way. And he, and he was taking good care of them. So, uh, um, at the time they lived with the, uh, at that moment, what we call the Coptics of Egypt, the Aqbat of, of Egypt. They used to live with them in peace. There were no issues. And also they used to live with the Fara'ina. And uh, those are the pharaohs, really, the, the, the people who actually used to run Egypt. Those are the people who actually own Egypt, and Egypt is really their land, as you would call it, all this time. They lived along very well for many, many years. But the time has come when what? Issues happen between them. And they say that يعني, this didn't happen, uh, يعني, uh, I guess, really, uh, a little bit by little bit. It happened all of the sudden, almost. When the Fir'aun itself, the one that we have a problem with, came into his mulk, into his kingdom, right? Some issues happened. And by then, the relationship between the Coptics and the actual Bani Israel was very deteriorated. It was really, really bad. To the point where what? Where they were looked down upon. I mean, as Bani Israel, they were looked at as like second class and third class. And they, they were really horrible people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained this. Um, how Fir'aun has done this when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ وَجَعَلَ أَهْلَهَا شِيعًا Listen to this. يَسْتَضِعِفُ طَائِفَةً مِّنْهُمْ يُذَبِّحُ أَبْنَاهُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيِ نِسَاؤُهُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنْ مُفْسِدِينَ So listen to this. Fir'aun, in order for him to rule Egypt, the only way he can do it, and he can rule it in peace, and he can have the, the, the I guess really the supreme kingdom and the, the exclusive ownership of everything, what he had to do is he had to make the people who live in Egypt into what? Into groups. And subhanAllah, this, doesn't, this never goes bad, eh? Right now when Stephen Harper was to want to win, what was he doing? You know what I'm saying? This, this is the way it works. Politics is the way it works. Farriq tasud. This is what they say to you. You want to you wanna, you wanna be the one who, who runs everything, even though you have no right for it, what do you do? You separate between the people. You guys are better than these guys. And you go to these guys, you guys are better than these guys. And you go to these guys, you guys are better than those guys. But I'm better than all of you. Because once you, once you accept, here's the thing. Once you accept that someone, that you're better than someone else, Here's the thing, this, this is the funny thing. Once you accept that you are better than someone else, it's not hard for me to come and to what? And to tell you that I'm better than you. You already know that there are some sort of classes, right? The, the, somebody who's better than somebody else, somebody's better than somebody else, and what, then why can't uh, someone else be better than me? This is the way that it, it actually works, right? So this is how Fir'aun basically took extreme ownership of this land by the basically really separating the people into different groups and making the Bani Israel, the Jews, into what? Into the lowest of the low. They say that's really what it's done. طيب. Um, here in it, قَالَ يُذَبِّحُ أَبْنَاهُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيِ نِسَاءَهُمْ Here's what happened. So one time they say that Fir'aun, I mean there are two different narrations here, two different explanations here. Ibn Kathir says that one time Fir'aun had a dream. <laughs> okay? And that uh, in his dream, he saw that uh, a fire came from Bith al-Maqdis, from Jerusalem, okay? And this fire burnt all of his kingdom except for the houses of Bani Israel that used to live there. This is a dream he had. I mean, subhanAllah, imagine when you're a tyrant enough of a, a big enough of a tyrant that your dream 
makes people worried. So he, when he asked, he said, what's going on with this dream? What, is this, what does this dream mean? So they told him, the only, way, the only way that we think about here is that there's going to be a young boy, and this ghulam is going to come, and his, he's going to what? He's going to destroy your kingdom. He's going to just ruin it into pieces. Okay, so how do we fix this problem? Easy, he said. Let's kill all the boys. And subhanAllah, it's not, no big deal, right? Like, you know, there's going to be uh, um, uh, immigrants are going to cause some issues. Let's just stop all of their coming, right? You know what I mean? Like, they're going to cause some issues. Let's, let's assimilate them into our society. Let's, you know, you, khalas. When someone is different than you, today, you get rid of them somehow. He said, you know what? Let's kill them all. And basically, that's what he has done. He would kill every single, he, like, he, he would hire like these people who would walk around and find out any of the Bani Israel who were like pregnant, the women, right? And what he would do is he would like, find out and they would like watch out, like his thesis I guess really, you know. He would find out and his CIA, he would find out what's, who's, who's, um, who's pregnant and they would wait for her to give birth. She gave birth to a boy, they take him and they slaughter him. She gave boy to a girl, khalas, go ahead and she'll, she'll serve us. That's okay. They say he did this for so many time, like so, such a long time, to the point where the people of Egypt were complaining to him, telling him, we can't find servants anymore. You've killed everybody. And those are the Bani Israel who are the servants, they used to serve us, and now you're killing them all, we can't even find servants. The older ones are starting to die off. We don't find anybody. So they even went to him, like this for a long time, right? For a long time this happened. Uh, to the point where they went to him and they said to him, listen, um, well, can, you, can we work out a deal? Can we work out something else better than this? So he asked, well, what's going on? He said to him, so we can at least, because he, by killing everybody in here, we know that danger is coming from one person. So at least what we can do is we can reduce the actual chance of this person coming by, by what? We can kill all the people, all the, all the boys who are born for one year and let the ones who are born the next year live. So we can at least have servants. We need people to work for us in our homes. Who's going to clean our houses? Who's going to wash our cars? Who's going to like, like, this is what they're all about, you know? So this is what happened. In the year that uh, they were allowed to live, a son for the mother of Musa was born. His name was Harun. He was an older brother of Musa, alayhi salam. In the year that the children were supposed to be killed, we had Musa alayhi salam. And, and the mother of Musa was hiding him very well. She, she hid him very well. Until the time when she gave birth to him. But she knew she couldn't hide him for, forever. And she would feed him and feed him and feed him and always hide him. And when people walk by, she'd make him quiet. And say, it was just a devastating situation that you think about. Like somebody who, you have, you have to tell a child to be quiet at times when he, I mean, kids don't listen. I have, I have alhamdulillah. <coughs> it doesn't matter how old they are, but you know, especially the babies, they cry whenever they want to. You can't really tell them what to do. It was just a, a, a stressful situation for her the whole time. So, what did she have to do? Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a revelation to her. And it's not a revelation like a prophethood revelation, but it's like a very strong urge, it's a very strong feeling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has thrown into her that she does something very amazing. That she would make up some sort of like a box or a basket made out of wood. And she would place this child in it and she would place it in the water. And she would allow for this um, water to take this boy with it down the stream. And some people say that stream itself was the actual river Nile itself, the very big, very famous Nile. Some people say it's just a small stream that used to run through. It doesn't matter where it is, but we know that the people of Egypt at the time used to always what, live around water. Until now, subhanAllah, the people of Egypt usually always live around water on both sides of the water. They don't live far away in the desert. It's not that, that's, not, that's not the kind of people that they actually are. Very few of them do that. Um, so, she placed the baby in this uh, box and then and he went downstream. SubhanAllah, with all the houses of everybody living in, in, uh, in Egypt at the time, right? This box goes and goes and goes and goes, this basket, and it stops where? In the house of whom? Fir'aun. Didn't go and stop in anybody. Thousands of people living around it. 
Well, where it goes into the what the house of the person who's planning on killing it. Right, and this is a test from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because imagine a mother, a mother giving feeling this urge, right, that she knows it. a righteous woman without a doubt. You'll you'll never ever. By the way, you'll never ever find these prophets coming from women who are not really what like good righteous women. Do you know what I'm saying? To that would have that kind of feeling, right? Uh, that she'd have some sort of really trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And uh, uh, from 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 the stories that it it says about is that she sent her daughter, what to. Uh, to go behind this box and to look for where it goes. And then the box goes and goes and goes and it goes into the house. It's going to the house of Pharaoh. He's going to see it and he's going to what? Cut it off. It's in his house. And Musa alayhi salam was dark skinned. No, he's not. It's not. It looked very, very distinct. So what happens? Pharaoh had a wife. And this wife was a righteous, believing woman. She was a good woman. And it was the true meaning of the word good woman. She saw this child, Musa alayhi salam, and she said, let me keep him. Let him, let me keep him. He's so cute, he's so beautiful, he's so this. I want to keep him, you know, he's, he's beautiful, he's going he's gonna to serve, he's going to serve. What harm can he do to you? We're going to raise him. There's no way he's going to be the one who's going to destroy you. He's ours, right? And Fir'aun, as much as he, he doesn't care, he's a big guy, he's like, you know, he saw his wife attached to this little baby, he's like, ah, fine. But he's not going to be a Qur'ain Ali. He said, what? I don't want him to be the apple of my eye, or the coolness of my eye, or whatever it is. I, for you, you can keep him. I don't really care. Imagine this, this is the kind of thing that some of the scholars say, if he would have said, Yes, let him be a Qurrat Ayn for me. None of this would have happened. Some scholars say this. They say, yani, had he have said, oh yeah, you know, I like him as well. But he was a tali, he was a tyrant. He didn't have kids. Yes, here he doesn't mention that he has kids, right? Or at least not from Asia. So, he grew in the house of Fir'aun. Musa alayhi salam grew in the house of Fir'aun. But before he grew, and this is the story about it that actually goes, is that when she was, uh, yani when they just caught him, and when they just got him, right? They were trying to find a person who's going to what? This a young baby to breastfeed him. This is a very important story, a part of the story itself, to tell you uh, the blessing of Allah Azza wa upon Musa alayhi salam. He what? They made announcements all over, saying we just need someone to breastfeed the son of Fir'aun. I mean, this is what it is right now, the son of Fir'aun, and everybody, everyone who would come. Uh, Musa alayhi salam would turn his face from her, he wouldn't breastfeed. He just wouldn't do it to the point where they got worried. He said, this guy, he's going to die, he doesn't want to feed, he doesn't, you know. So what did happen? Subhanallah, the, the, the daughter, the, the sister of Fir'aun heard about this. And she said, Hal adullukum ala Listen, the sister itself knew about this and she said to them, Hal adullukum ala Do you want me to tell you who would take care of it? And then she goes and she tells the mother, Mom, I found him, you know, and he's alive. And guess what? He will, uh, he will feed from no one. Come. And then, when, you know, subhanAllah, this is, you have to imagine this. And then she comes and they say, subhanAllah, yani when, when the mother of Musa alayhi salam, imagine this, yani this is a, a couple of days old when she came, she was in such a shock, yani she almost gave herself up. And I, you, the brothers probably don't really have this, but the women, she, yani, this is her son. She almost gave him up, saying, my son. But she held on. And then she was the one who was actually what? Responsible for feeding him until he grew. And now she's the mother, to at least to everybody else, the mother by feeding. Nobody knows that this is the mother, his real mother, but this is the, at least the mother by feeding. And here, subhanAllah, yani, this is the, the amazing ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of His servants. The amazing ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of His servants. And the amazing ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans for a long, long time. Who would have known that uh, 
Yaqub alayhi salam would have a son by the name of Yusuf alayhi salam who would be taken by his brothers and thrown into a yam, into a, a well. And this well, some people will come and take it. Imagine, uh, long term, this is not Allah, so we're not talking about like a couple of years, you're talking about years, right? And this young, what, what happens to this young, this young man, he goes, and the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, he goes to jail and out of jail, and he becomes what? He becomes the Aziz of the area, he becomes the actual ruler, and then his brothers come to him, and then he recognizes them. And then he tells them to go and get my dad. And then they live. And for years on end, to the point where all this time until Musa comes, and the story comes of Musa alayhi salam himself. Is Musa related to Yaqub? Yeah, he's uh, his grand, grandsons. Yeah, all of them. So all of the, so anybody who tells you this is uh, the Bani Israel, he is what? He's related to Yaqub. He's the son of... So all, everyone who claims to be sons of Israel, right now, uh, the, 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 I mean, really, right now, if you think about the Jews right now, for instance, who live now, those are Europeans. They don't really... But the actual Jews, the ones that you probably know, who actually have lived in Palestine for the longest, these are actually direct descendants of uh, Yaqub, alayhi yes. salam. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the actual direct times, uh, how long it is, but it's actually something that's worthy of, of us checking. But it, it was years... It was a long, long, yeah, years, long, long times of years. Alhamdulillah, I know, I know you are going to come. Yeah. The time goes, my brothers, and this is really the test that actually happens here. The time goes when uh, Musa grows up into a very strong and powerful man. Musa alayhi salam was very strong, powerful. He, everybody always had a description of him. Uh, even the, if you know the story of his death, we'll tell about it. It tells that he's a strong, he was very well built, Jasim, he had strength. One time he's walking by and he sees what a fight happening between the Coptics, one, one Coptic, one person from the Egypt, Egyptian, right? Uh, and one from Bani Israel. And the Bani Israel are the lowly ones, they're the lower class, right? Without any doubt. So what happens is the one from Bani Israel what calls out for help. Help! Help me! Help me! Like this is basically what's happening here. And Musa alayhi salam is on what? Is on the methodology of Muslims in Surah Khaqa Daliman. Oh you help your brother regardless of whether he is what? He's the oppressor or the oppressed. If he is the oppressor, you stop him from being the oppressor. And he's oppressed, you help him out. So Musa alayhi salam, as soon as he actually came, what happens? وَكَزَهُ يعني He basically just pushed the guy a little push and the Coptic man what? Dies. Immediately. Strong. It's a big fight and he's strong and يعني he could have, could have fell into a rock, could have fell into anything else but he basically killed him. This, is not, this, is, this, this has never happened. Bani Israel are being killed by Egyptians for years. But the first time one of uh, Bani Israel kills what? The Egyptian. So the man, the other man, gets scared and runs. And, and Musa alayhi salam runs. It's a scary situation. He hides. And uh, as you call it, really, I guess the police officers come and every investigation has started out. Everybody's looking for who killed, who would, who would dare kill an Egyptian? You know? Um, and the story goes that. Uh, a day after or a couple of days after, what happens is that Musa alayhi salam, as he's walking, he sees the same man fighting with another Egyptian. And uh, Musa alayhi salam, and he gets irritated with this guy. You're a guy of trouble. Musa alayhi salam is a righteous man, by the way. Before he becomes a prophet, he's a righteous, good man. He becomes irritated with this man. And he says to him, you're, you're a person who transgresses and mubin. It's very obvious to me now that you're a guy who causes trouble. Yeah, you're a troublemaker. Clearly you're a troublemaker, right? So, at this moment, Musa alayhi salam steps in to save him. To help him, regardless of what it is, right? But they say the man from Bani Israel misunderstands the situation. He misunderstands the actual body language of Musa alayhi salam. He said, you want, to, you want to kill me like you killed the guy yesterday? And now everybody's around. And they hear what? <gasps> Musa killed the man yesterday? 
this is how it works out. So Musa alayhi salam, khalas, al-amr intashar. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. This is a done deal. Khalas, we, we have a problem here, basically. We have a serious problem. And Musa runs. And they say that there is a righteous man who came and told him that, you know, people are coming for you. Uh, and he's, you know, trying to fix the situation. It's a misunderstanding. I didn't really mean it. All of these things. No, you better run. There is no way out for you except for you to actually run. And Musa alayhi salam leaves Egypt at that moment. He leaves Egypt heading towards an area called Median. Now, um, on his way to Median, um, on the border or the outside of Median, he passes by a well. This is a well where there is water coming and in it, Khalas uh, Musa alayhi salam, they say, they say, and some of the Sahabas they say, he was barefoot walking all this space. He does, he's miskin. Median is outside of Egypt. So it's towards, yeah, so it's towards, uh, the, the, I don't really know the exact, the exact location, but it's, it's outside of the actual vicinity of where um, Fir'aun rules. Yeah, where, 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 where it's, it's outside of where Fir'aun uh, rules. Can I have a pen from my bag? Just pass me the bag. Just pass me the whole bag, sorry. I have to use it for something very important. Very important. <coughs> I'm sorry. This is very important, yeah. This is very important. Um, so we stopped at the time when he went to actually what? To, to, he, he was told to leave by this, by this, by this man helped, asking him to help him. And then what, he, what does he go? He goes to Median. On his way out to Median, we say he passes by a well. And in this well, he pa finds a whole bunch of ru'a, a whole bunch of people who are what? Who are seeking to get water. And he sees these people are all around this well and they're fighting over the well and then he looks farther a little bit, Musa alayhi salam, and he finds two girls. And these two girls, they're standing there and they're what? Uh, and they're holding on to their animals. They're making sure their animals what? They don't mix up with the animals of everybody else's. So Musa alayhi salam, he asks, what's going on? What's the issue here happening? Well, subhanAllah, they, um, they answer him. Um, يعني يعني we're not going to actually uh, water our animals or give water to our animals until what? Leave. We don't mix with men. Basically, this is what these women are saying. Righteous women, basically. We don't mix with men. And the reason why we're out here, even though we're, we don't mix with men, is because our father is what? وَأَبُونَا شَيْخٌ كَبِيرٌ and, and our father well, is, our father is an old man. He can't be out here as well also fighting. So what does Fir'aun do at this moment? فَسَقَ لَهُمَا He says, okay, I'll take care of this for you. He's the one who goes and he's a strong man. He goes and he what? He brings the water for their animals and he places it in there. And, he, and then he what? He heads away from them. And as they say, subhanAllah, and one of the beautiful du'as that, uh, that Musa alayhi salam comes up with. SubhanAllah, a lot of du'a, you find that you find specific du'a for the noon, specific du'a for so and so on, speak of that, right? One of the beautiful is du'a that, um, uh, yeah, that Musa alayhi salam says, قَالَ رَبِّي إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتُ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٌ رَبِّي إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٌ Oh Allah, verily, I am in need for the goodness that you have given to me. He knows basically the goodness is coming. But now I'm looking for it. He's not saying, oh Allah, give me, give me that goodness that, where is it? He's saying, I know it's here God, and now I'm in need for it. And now I am in need for it. And as he's sitting there, the women, those two girls, they go to their father. And their father is a righteous man, as I explained to you. So they explain to him the actual story. And uh, they tell him, you know, you have to reward this man. You have to reward this man somehow. So he goes and tells him to go get Musa alayhi salam. And they say the story, subhanAllah, out of the, and this is one of the beautiful stories that they actually tell about how righteous these women are and how Musa alayhi salam was acting. That, that almost he, he, when she called him, فَأَتْتِحْدَهُمَا عَلَىٰ 
Stihia, when she was really shy, looking down on the ground, she says, okay, you know, my dad wants to talk to you. She's not even looking at him in his face, right? So he's telling her, okay, well, let's go see him. But if you walk in front of me, right, um, it's for me to follow you, what happens? I will see you. I will see your body walking in front of me and so on and so forth. And that's, I'm not that kind of man. And nowadays you look at what we look at and what this man was, you know, this because it's a prophet, guys. We're not joking. This is not at the time Musa alayhi salam wasn't even a prophet. He was just a righteous man, but he knew in the ruling of Bani Israel, these are these are righteous religious men. They know what's good and what's not. So what do they what he says, Sister Her, I'll walk in front of you. And whenever there is a turn, you throw a rock towards the direction that I have to turn. Yes. So she would walk, he would walk in front of her. She would walk behind him. And when he has to turn towards the way, she would what? She would throw a rock and he knows that this is the way he would walk in. And she followed him until they got to the actual home. In the home itself, they met with uh, her father. And uh, he heard, told him the story, told him everything, uh, all of his life story. And I killed someone by a mistake. And, and then here, uh, the man what, gives him what? Alhamdulillah, now they're not going to get to you here. You're okay here. You can, you know, you, you're out. Don't feel safe at this moment. Feel safe at this moment. So, uh, as he's staying with them, Musa alayhi salam, they say one of the daughters came what, and gave her father an idea. Tell me, Abi Oh, my father, um, uh, why don't you uh, employ him? Verily, the best of those whom you uh, employ are the what? Al Qawi. Al-Ameen, the best of people that you want to employ is what? This is in the Quran, the Quran, the strong ones and the what? Honest. And the honest, Al-Ameen. And you, you want to find an employee, an, emplo uh, 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 an employee, you find the strong one and the honest one. You don't find, because nowadays we look for strong ones, you don't look for honest ones, we look for honest one, and he's very weak, he can't do the work. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And this is our problem. But this is the best thing you want. You want to find someone to do any work for you to do it. Okay, so how will, I, how will he employ him? He comes and he gives them an offer. In this offer, my brothers, the man says to Musa alayhi salam, I have two daughters. You pick any one of them. And I will marry her to you. And that will be what? Basically what I pay you for. He says to him, I don't have any mahr, I don't have any money. Musa came with nothing. He says to him, you serve in me for at least eight years. And if you want to really honor me, serve me for ten years. But all I'm asking you for is for you to serve me for eight years. And he marries one of his daughters and he lives with them for eight years. Some scholars say he passed the 10 years itself gave the man his truly full due honor. After this time, Musa salam misses his family, misses his household. He really wants to go uh, to uh, Egypt. He wants to go to Egypt. Imagine yani, living, uh, nowadays we live in Canada, we talk to our family back home with the phones. And we miss some of the, those of us who've lived for a long time. Because when he lived, when he left Egypt, he wasn't a young boy. He was a grown man. He was a grown man who used to have a family and he used to love everybody else. And people used to love him. So now he wants to go and see them. So he takes his wife and he takes his children and he heads towards Egypt. Um, on his way back to Egypt... Musa alayhi salam and his family, they lose the way. They get lost. And this is a very dangerous situation. Um, and as he's actually yani, looking around for a way out, he sees what very bright fire happening on one side of his way. Fire, big, huge fire. And then he goes and he says, tells what his family, you guys stay here. Inni anastunara, inni anastunara. I feel, I'm seeing a fire somewhere. La'alli atikum minha bi qabas. Aw ajidu ala nar. Huda, yani, wait here, let me go ahead. 
I'll find, I'll ask these people what for some sort of guidance. Where's the way to Egypt? Or the least that can happen is I can come bring you guys some sort of fire so we can at least cook or do something with it. Like that's the least of two things. So they say Musa, the strong man, kept walking wearing his uh, na'alain. He's wearing his uh, uh, shoes. And as he's walking, he's leaving marks on the ground with what? With his na'alain. He's walking basically to this place here. Wait, leaving marks. Why is he leaving marks? Come back. So he knows his way back. So he knows his way back. It was at this location here, my brothers and respected sisters, is that when Allah Azza wa has revealed to Musa for the first time the revelation that it's going to say. And I will leave you here today. I won't actually tell you anything about it. I will tell you about it next week. Bi ta'ala. Asa Allah Azza wa Jal to bless you all. Yeah. Asa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all, inshallah. Asa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring you for me, inshallah, next Friday. ta'ala. I didn't want to leave you at a place where it's really, really good, but this is a place where you need to come back, inshallah, to find the story of how the revelation came to Musa alayhi salam. So, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Hayy ala salam.